Well, hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Unlocked. I'm your host, Tom Tracy Wilson. My pleasure to be with you guys today. It is Friday morning here on the beautiful Gold Coast, and I thought this morning, right, what can I share with you guys today that has made, I suppose, a real impact on my life? Like, what are some of the things that I've done to achieve success in my life? And one of the things that I um, have used over a number of years is this method that I call the vision manifestation method. And the reason I wanted to share it with you guys is because often I get asked, oh my God, how do you do that? Like, how do you just kind of bring the things that you want into your life? They just kind of seem to show up. Like if there's a particular type of person that you're looking for, or uh, you need a, a, you know, you're looking for some new, um, a new project to work a new project to work on, or you're wanting to do something a little, you know, different. How do you how do you actually make all of that happen? Because often I will voice that voice what it is that I'm looking for uh, with people, and then the next day uh, that kind of shows up. So anyway, today I've I thought I would dig deep and I would think about like how do I do that? Like what is this vision manifestation method that I've been doing for a number of years? So I'm going to share with you um, even back in my in my corporate days, uh, like whether I didn't really understand or know that this is what I was doing, but I actually was. When I reflect back, I was using this method of the vision manifestation method in everything that I was doing. And if you guys um, have been following me for, for some time, you'll know that in my previous life, prior to entrepreneurship, I used to run a very large uh, region of a bank. Um, so I was responsible for you know loads and loads of branches, lots and lots of people, and uh, often I would be asked. Often I would be asked to go into areas that were not performing very well, and my job was to try and uh, was to improve the performance from a sales uh, from a pr- sales perspective because in the banking industry it was, at that time and I'm talking 10 years ago things have changed a little bit now but um, was very very sales oriented and so I knew that when I went into these regions that I had to make improvements and uh, funnily enough part of the process was that we would have to write a business plan and at the time I used to think oh boring I've got to write a flaming business plan I'll, I'll put you know, all of my my thoughts, my ideas, you know, as you do, like your vision, your mission, all of that sort of stuff into this business plan. And uh, the bank used to give us a, a stock standard plan that you would need to run through. And one of the things that I used to do that was a little bit different to everybody else is I would start like writing down, like thinking about things from a future perspective. So what I mean by that, so what I mean by that is like if I got into a region, I would think about, well, what do I actually want this region to look like after I have done all the tasks or done all, you know, in a year's time, what will this place look like? What will the culture of this, um, you know, of my my local area be? What will we have achieved? What accolades will we have got? What awards will I win? So on and so forth. And I, so I very much started thinking about uh, bringing the future forward, like bringing that right forward into my to, into that moment of, I'm at this point now. Things are not going very well, but what is it that I am going to bring into uh, manifest and bring into my vision? So I always would bring that forward. And funnily enough, I put all of that sort of stuff. I used to cut out pictures and magazines and and put them into um, you know into the business plan. And I would send it off, and people used to think, "Oh, this is a little bit, you know, it's not your stock standard." professional corporate business plan uh, business plan um but then they would be astounded like you know a few months later when oh my god where did this woman come from where why is it that the branches or that the regions that she's looking after used to be at the bottom of the barrel and then all of a sudden they are starting to climb the ladder why is it that they are like coming out of nowhere and starting to perform that is what i started doing and at the time, like I, like I said, I didn't know that that was even a thing because I was in the corporate world. They didn't do that sort of stuff. It wasn't the norm. Everything inside of the corporate world was very corporate. You know, you wrote things down. You wrote them in a very professional manner. You certainly didn't use pictures and you certainly didn't, you know, use dreaming to put uh, put any of that into, into your plan. You would write them in a very uh, strategic way, which would have been called your vision and your mission. So anyway, that was one of the things that I started doing. And then when I had the opportunity to leave the uh, the leave the uh, the corporate world and move into entrepreneurship, 
And I did this because whilst I was in the corporate space, I actually had the opportunity to start working with an Olympian. She came to me because I was uh, one of the one of the uh, people inside of the, the banking uh, organization that I was working for that was responsible for increasing women's markets. So my job was to help women in business uh, improve their businesses and improve their business acumen. So anyhow, this uh, Olympian had been had uh, been given my name as the person that could give her an opportunity to speak to a bunch of uh, what we call SME clients inside of the, the banking sector, a small to medium sized enterprise. And so anyway, I put on a number of events for this Olympian and as she was talking, she was talking about visualization and she was telling us that uh, in the Olympic, um, part of the Olympic team, one of the PIC team, one of the things that they did to improve their performance wasn't always to be doing things from a, a physical uh, point of view. That wasn't about exerting energy on something. What they were required to do was spend some time, you know, being quiet and actually visualizing what it was that they needed to do, how they would perform their particular tasks when they were at the Olympics. And uh, also she told the story of how when she went to the Olympics, she had a really bad accident and uh, it took her out of of her um, out of the Olympic Games, which meant that she wasn't able to uh, to participate. And she said that one of the mentors that she had at the time was Peter Sir Peter Brock. And I don't know if you if you guys know who he is, racing car driver, um, and he died some some years ago. But he was one of the mentors that her sporting team had. And uh, because she had had this injury, Peter Brock had this injury, Peter Brock said to her, right, what I want you to do is of, you know, as many times as you can throughout the day, I want you to actually just close your eyes and I want you to visualize these, um, he called them little critters, crawling down, you know, inside of you, crawling down to your leg and actually stitching up all the fibers, stitching up all of the problems that you were having with um, this injury that she'd had so that they could help you to, to get back to form so that eventually you will be able to play potentially. Doctors had ruled it out. She wasn't going to be playing. It was not going to happen. And anyhow, she said she thought at the time, all right, well, I know that I've, um, you know, I've had to do this visualization stuff before because that's what we've been taught to do. It helps us with our performance. It's proven to help us with our performance. So, you know, maybe I'll just give it a go here. Maybe he's not, you know, completely bonkers. He's a very uh, astute, um, you know, sporting person himself and very um, got a lot of, you know, um, got a lot of, you know, a lot of uh, success himself. So I'll follow this. I'll do it. And so she'd use that form of visualization to actually start healing herself. She says, I, you know, I visualized that there were these little critters that were, you know, climbed down my leg um, inside of me and they were actually stitching me up and, and fixing all the fibers and all the areas of my body that needed to be fixed to enable me to get back on that court and actually play volleyball for Australia at the highest of levels. And she said that as she did that, um, thankfully, her using that technique meant that she was actually able to play uh, at the Olympics and she was able to complete her dream. Now, when I heard that and I knew that I had been doing some of these techniques myself with like visualization and putting them into business plans, but not really kind of that deep. I didn't really understand at the time the, the real power of doing this. I just did it because, you know, I thought by putting these pictures in a book or putting them into uh, my business plan, into uh, my business plan, it just helped me to visualize them more. I was certainly not thinking about them at on any other level other than that as to, as to bringing them to my uh, you know bringing them to my forefront and then after hearing uh, her speak about that I then had an opportunity to leave the banking uh, world and start my own entrepreneurial journey and I'm going to bring up um, something <clears throat> this is a few years kind of down the track in my entrepreneurial journey but I use that same technique the vision manifestation method. And I saw this come up in my photographs on Facebook um, a few days ago. And I want to bring it up on the screen. For those of you that are watching on a, um, on a pod, or listening, I should say, on the podcast right now, what I'm going to share is a image that I had created, which was a vision board that I'd put up uh, back in 2016. And let me just pull it up right now. And I'll put it on the screen so that you guys can actually see it. You can't see it in, in great detail because I've kind of, um, you know, uh, made it a little bit 
blurry so that everybody can't see exactly what I had on there. But what was really interesting about this particular board was I had um, I had this vision. I did repeated that same process. I knew that I needed to bring into my into my vision into the forefront of my mind exactly what it was that I wanted to achieve in my life, and it had all sorts of things from. Uh, traveling the world to the type of, you know, the car that a new car that I wanted to buy to the type of person that I wanted to be helping in my business, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I'd created this vision, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I'd created this vision board, cut out some imagery out of uh, magazines, created some images myself, put words on there. And the words that I created were ones that I were like, were, I was speaking into the future and bringing those words forward in terms of where I would be published, um, the fact that I'd be, you know, write a book, all of these sorts of things that I'd put on this vision board. And uh, anyway, in in uh, 2018, we moved house. So this vision board was from 2016, and I had packed this board up and put it into uh, into a box. And when we moved house in 2018, I was in the, uh, we call it the cage downstairs at our apartment. And uh, I was in there and I was like going through the boxes and I pulled this out and I was like, oh, wow, gosh, I remember doing this, this particular vision board. Oh my God, back in like 2016. And I looked at it and I went through everything that was on there and I had stuff that I, and I had stuff that I had only dreamed about doing as a young girl or as in, you know, whilst I was in uh, my my corporate career, hoping that someday in the four days, uh, the four weeks a year that I was given in, in my annual leave, that sometime I might be able to visit a bunch of places, Disneyland being one of them, uh, the, the Grand Canyon, uh, going on the... Um, you know, going to San Francisco, going to New York. I had all these different places on that particular vision board in the hope, like I, it was, it was my dream board. It was like, I want to, you know, I'm going to put these on my vision board and I'm going to bring them to fruition through manifestation. And as we know with, you know, also by putting these things to the forefront of our mind, it also means that I set an intention, right? So I set the intention and I started to know exactly I'm going to call it the North Star. I knew where I was going, knew where I was going and what it was that I that I wanted to achieve. So that simple exercise of actually dreaming into the future about what it was that I wanted, making it very visual by putting it onto a, a vision board, and then being able to see that each and every day and being able to think about yes, that's where I want to go. That's what I want to do. Now, what are the actions and who do I have to be now to bring all of those to fruition? And like I said, that happened back in 2016. And when I was downstairs in the cage and I pulled it out of the box, I'm like, oh my God, look at all. And I said to my husband, check this out. Look at this. Um, because at the time he used to think I was a bit woo woo in terms of like doing all of this sort of stuff, thinking, yeah, it doesn't really work. And then he's now, as you can imagine, completely um, a, a believer in the stuff that I that I now do in terms of like putting bringing your vision to life, putting it onto life putting it on a vision board, being able to see it on a daily basis, setting your intention about what it is that you want in your life and not kind of just meandering through life, hoping that everything will be okay. Be very intentional and very deliberate about what it is that you want and what are the things that you actually are going to do in your life and the person that you are going to be to bring those to fruition. Now, funnily enough, when I looked at all of the things that were on the vision board, I was I was flabbergasted because at that time I did it thinking that would be nice, right? It would be nice if I could have all of, if I could achieve these things. It would be nice if someday I could go to, um, you know, I could go to America and, and travel around and see all of these wonderful things. Then actually looking at that board. And this was like literally 18 months later. So that was two, end of 2016. 2018, we had moved into this new property. And that's when I, I pulled it. And that's when I, I pulled it out and I actually saw it. And I'm like, holy crap. In a really short space of time, I knocked off almost everything 
on that board. The only thing that was left was uh, that we wanted to buy a jet ski and we didn't buy the jet ski because when we moved to our apartment, we had nowhere to put it. But other than that, um, we still go jet skiing and we just hire them instead. So it's a very, very, very powerful. Somebody here is saying visualize to materialize. Absolutely. So one of the methods, like I said, that I've used to ensure that I am able to bring bring about the things that I want in my life is I do use that that method of visualization. The other thing that I um, a lot of people also ask me to ask me is that all you do? Well, no, it's not because I am a firm believer that you know you can visualize and you can man- you know you can you, you can think and think and think about what is it that I think about what is it that I want? How do I bring that about? And you will have all heard um, Napoleon Hill's you know heard of his book uh, the you know think. Think and grow rich, and I think that there is a um, there is a flaw in that message, and the fa- and the fact that you can't just think about it. You actually need to take you know once you've thought about it, you've brought that visualization into into its reality uh, by actually being able to see it. You then need to take action, and the actions are that you need to start thinking about who is it? Do I need to be? Who do I need to become to actually have all of these things? So, for example. When I was thinking about, so I want to travel, um, and, fun, and and at that time too, traveling further than kind of my home country, so between Australia and New Zealand, uh, without my husband was like, well, that was super scary. So one of the things that I had to be was comfortable and confident enough to be able to travel on my own. So I rule on my own. So I really worked on that. I'm going to be confident and organized enough that I'm going to be able to travel on my own. So that's part of the part of the being. When you're creating that that being piece, I often think about it as, you know, um, I'm able to blah blah blah. And I, I can I can do these things. Because when when you're able to be all of those things, then you find that you're then able to do whatever it is that you need to do. That then comes from the being, and then you can have all the things that you need that you desire to have because of the being and the doing. And I think when you put all of those three things together, the being, the do, and then you can have together in that order, then you start to really enable yourself to tick a lot of the things off of your list that you would like to do. And I was going to mention the other thing that I uh, often do is like. In part of the shows that I've been doing over, that I've been doing over the last number of months, I've been interviewing on a series uh, called the She Myth Eliminator series. I've been interviewing women from all over the world about their She Myth She Myth stories and some of the things that have held them back in the past and how they've actually overcome those. And what I noticed was that all the women who have overcome significant adversity in their life have done this particular thing. And it was that they turned inward. They got really, really quiet with themselves and they started to listen to what their intuition was telling them to do. So often, I've mentioned this before, that chair behind me, that one over there, um, I will often sit on that chair and just you know use that time to meditate and think about the things that I want the visualization of my of the the life that I'm wanting to create, the imagery that I'm creating. I'm not only creating it in its physical form, like on a vision board, but I'm also creating it over and over, adding it over and over and over again, like a movie in your mind. And when you do that, you start to then play out all of the things that you want to bring about in your life, they start to appear. And when you do that, you're also starting to um, bring them to life because you're then able to recognize the opportunities when they arise. So sometimes if you don't do this process, often opportunities come up for us, right? You have opportunities all the time. And this is something that I've, I've um I've also heard from uh, my mentors and also have experienced myself is that you will be given kind of like these divine opportunities or ideas or concepts that come to you. And if you're not ready for them, they're going to give that idea to somebody else at the same time because not everybody takes action. When is it that you take action when you see an opportunity? You only see the opportunity when you've already created the already created the created the vision of what it is that you want in your mind, right? You already know. Okay, so I'm wanting to create X, Y, Z, and then an opportunity appears. 
and I'm going to give you a classic example of this. Earlier last year, so I've always wanted to write a book, was always in my mind. That's what I want to do, right? And then, and I had been um, I had been doing some, you know, meditation and what have you on it. It was on my vision board. And then an opportunity came up. I happened to be on Vicki Helm's show early last year. And her and I got chatting. And straight after that show, she's like, um, hey, that was really awesome. I think we should write a book. And she'll say to you, it was like, it was like that. And I instantly said, yes. The reason I instantly said yes was because it was on my radar. It was on my, it was on my, um, you know, on my vision board. It was what I was wanting and what I was wanting. And so therefore, I saw that opportunity. If it wasn't in my, you know, in my um my sphere of of dream, then I probably would have said, thank you very much, but I'm not, I don't think I'm capable of writing a book. I don't think I'd be able to to do that. I appreciate the opportunity, but I think I'm going to give it a miss. But I didn't. And the reason I didn't, it was because it was always been on my radar. It's always been something that I wanted to do. So my point here is that when you do this, it means that when the opportunities, when the door opens, you know exactly which doors you are going to walk through. And it enables you to bring the things that you want in your life to fruition. So I hope that's been useful for you today. I wanted to share that with you because it always makes me smile when I go back and I actually look at that vision board because it just reminds me of how powerful we actually are. It reminds me of, you know, sometimes we think, sometimes we think, that's not possible. I don't think I'll ever be able to go there. I, you know, it's not possible. My grandmother said one day she would take me to Disneyland and she never, ever got to do it. Maybe I'll never, ever be able to go. But then being able to bring that to fruition, put it on my board, be able to think about it in a, in a way that manifests it and brings it into, bring, means that I can do all the right actions to bring it to fruition, now proves that this process works and it's worked over and over and over again for me. So I wanted to share that with you because I think it's been super powerful for me. And if you haven't tried that technique uh, yourself or you've done it in the past and now you don't do it anymore, this is just that gentle reminder that, hey, you are very, very powerful. You are capable of doing a lot of things. Just put it on your board, bring it to the forefront of your mind and start being the person that you need to be to bring all of that to fruition. Of that to fruition. So I'm going to leave you guys with that today. You've got a whole weekend to start dreaming about what it is that you want to bring into your life, and the process of actually creating a uh, creating a vision board. It's not that difficult. Get yourself a pen and paper and write things down or get yourself a blank piece of paper and just start, you know, posting pictures on it. Um, create the family of your dreams, create the partner of your dreams, create, you know, start dreaming into all of that and then start being the person that you need to. And someone here, thank you very much, is saying, yes, and she went beyond just writing the book. She's now a best-selling author. Thank you very much. And yeah, that's exactly what happened. So it's been a super exciting ride. Uh, this is a process that I use on a regular basis. And and uh, one of the other things that I also um, start using now is a, is a book that we've actually the team created because I feel that this is so, so important. We have, we have uh, incorporated the, 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 the vision and the manifestation piece into a journal called the Freedom Seekers Journal, which also incorporates tapping. Vicki Helm will probably tell you a lot more about that on her uh, some of her upcoming shows, the Coffee Break show. So just keep your eyes and ears peeled for that because I can tell you now that that is a huge productivity hack that, we, uh, that we've created and we use it in our team very, very successfully for every single person. And it's something that you guys can also start using. So just just keep your eyes peeled and uh, start watching, you know, Vicky Helm's Coffee Break show because she'll start talking about that too over the coming weeks. She'll be sharing all of her amazing hacks because she's a super efficient uh, and productive person. So that being said, guys, I want to um, I'm going to say thank you so much for watching today. I'm going to be back again next week on Wednesday at 10 a.m. with another episode of Unlocked. Next week, I've got a guest with me. We'll be talking more about how to unlock the message inside of you. We'll unlock the message inside of you. We'll be talking a lot about um, digital marketing and how you can create online products and how you can also create assets 
and multiple streams of income. So just keep your eyes and ears peeled and tune in next week for that show. For now, thanks so much for watching. I'm going to see you guys again next week and spend some time over the weekend. Create yourself a vision board. Go to the Success Secrets for Business, Family and Life group and post your vision boards in there. I want to see them. All right, guys, have a fantastic week and I'll see you again next week. Bye for now.